Glory to God. How many are excited about the end of the year coming? <laughs> Glory to God. His promises are yea and amen. Hallelujah. That means it's either yes or yes. That's what yea and amen means. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. The year will end well for you. In the name of Jesus. Things will yet fall in place for you. And even some testimonies or miracles you are not expecting, I decree they will still come through in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for an unexpected end of year breakthrough for somebody here. That amen is not born again. Glory to God. An unexpected end of year breakthrough. An unexpected end of year breakthrough. An unexpected end of year breakthrough. If it's you I'm talking about, come on, give the Lord a big, big shout. Woo! Glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. Come on, say with me, I receive it. Even me prophesying, I receive it. Amen. I'm ready for an end of year unexpected breakthrough. Glory to God. All right. We've been talking about emotions. And we've been looking at how important our feelings are. We have mostly underplayed and undermined and underestimated how important our feelings are. But Jesus did not do that. God did not do that. They both think our feelings are important. We're going to continue today. I'm going to deal basically with anxiety and worry today. Uh, because one of the major feelings most human beings are going to face, anxiety and worry, all right? It's one of the strongest emotions you will face. Um, somehow, you will face anxiety in one area or the other of your life. You usually face anxiety in an area that is not yet working for you. So if you uh, um, need financial breakthrough and there's no money at the moment, you can have anxiety about provision, about your finances. Some people have anxiety about their future. They don't know how their future is going to look. All right? They are wondering, oh, how will tomorrow be? Some people have anxiety about their marriage. Will I still get married? Will I still get married? I'm, I'm, I'm getting older and older. Will I still get married? Some people have anxiety about their health. About their health. Oh, my, my, my great-grandmother had diabetes. My mother had diabetes. You know, uh, me too, I'm, I'm just looking like somebody that will have diabetes. <laughs> you know, so anxiety somehow will come to all of us. So how do we deal with anxiety? Let me first of all talk about why it's important not to be anxious or not to worry. Why it's important? One, number one, uh, living in anxiety or worry affects your state of health you are not going to be as rested and as relaxed as you should be. It's going to affect your health. Worry affects your health. This is why God doesn't want us to worry. God does, in fact, the way the Bible sees it, the Bible almost sees worry like sin. Why do I say so? Because the Bible expressly tells us not to worry. And every time you are doing something contrary to what God said to do, that is sin. I hope you understand. All right? The Bible clearly says, cast your care upon the Lord. The Bible clearly says, take no thought for your life. Don't worry about what you eat or what you will drink. It's clear. So, when you are doing something contrary to that, it's a sin. So, it affects your health when you are in anxiety. If our medical practitioners will tell you that most great illnesses that come on people start from the basis of anxiety. Medical people know that. And see what the Bible says in Proverbs 17, 22. Can we read together, everybody? Want to go? Did you see this? They were referring to our health here. They said, a merry heart is, is as good as taking tablets. It brings so much healing. Hallelujah. When you have joy. And, you know, that's why, you know, <laughs> you, 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 you know, some of you are enjoying because apart from the word of God, you also laugh throughout service. If, you know, you push you will pay me, you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, because I'm angry. Why would comedians be richer than me? Because I make you laugh and I still teach you the word. But, that, that, but you know what I'm saying? What I'm trying to say is that, you know, here they're referring to your health particularly. They're saying, look, a merry heart 
joy and happiness is going to um, um, it's going to be like medicine to you. It's going to bring healing to your body. Now, see the next line. It said, but a broken spirit dried the bones. It's going to have the exact opposite effect on your health. When they say drying the bones, they're talking about your health. I don't know if somebody gets what I'm saying. So they're saying your health will literally dry up when you are in anxiety and in worry and things like that. Your health will be affected. So that's one reason why you should not be in anxiety and worry. I'm going to try and move fast because... Oh, this is intro. Number two, why God doesn't want you to be in anxiety and fear is that whenever you are in anxiety, you will act out of fear. You will act out of fear. The Bible said those that believe do not make haste. And you get what I'm saying? The Bible said those that are in faith, they don't make haste. Because anytime you are in anxiety and fear, you act out of that fear and usually you will get a negative outcome. Like Abraham and Ishmael. They both, they, Abraham and Sarah brought that plan to sleep with Ishmael out of fear that his Isaac would never come. So they did their own plan and they brought Ishmael. They acted out of fear. You make bad decisions. You marry the wrong person because you don't believe that there's a better person ahead coming. You, you just make the wrong move. Number, th number three. Is it three? Number three. When you are living in fear and anxiety, you will likely harm yourself and harm others. In James chapter four, they say, where do all this fighting and warring come from? Say it comes because you, were, you, you, you prayed and you didn't get it. So you began to fight other people. All haters are people that didn't receive their own blessing. Or you don't know. That's what jealousy is. Somebody blessed than you or blessed like you really cannot jealous you. It's somebody that feels that his own is not coming. See, you, this world will be a happier world when everybody is blessed. Most people that are hating you or angry with you, it's not really you they're angry with. They're angry with their life. They just have, they're looking for somebody to express it on. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. So you harm yourself and you harm others when you are in anxiety and in fear. And you see that in James chapter 4. He said there are warnings and fightings among, you can you bring from me from verse 1. Say from whence come what? Wars and fightings among you. He said, come day not hence, even of your lust that war in your members. He said, ye lust and have not. You kill. Do you see this? And desire to have and cannot obtain. He said, you fight and war, yet you have not. They say, why? Because you have not asked the person that can give you. So you are busy fighting others. Whenever you are in anxiety and fear, You'll be wasting your time fighting others. There'll be so much rancor, so much bitterness, so much hatred. Don't you see in families, the person that is blessed is hated by all the other ones not blessed. They will feel he's always pompous. Why does he come late for family meeting? Does know Why must we do the meeting in VI? Let's do it in, 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 in Ijebode. <laughs> he said, if all of them can fly to Dubai, the meeting can hold in Dubai. It's anger. Why, 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 why? Why must we wait for him to come? We must wait for him to come because... <laughs> he's, the, he's the one that can bring an idea and be willing to back up. The rest of you is just deliberation. You will turn into. Idea that you can't back up. <laughs> is somebody getting what I'm saying? Number four, Jerry. <laughs> when you are in anxiety and worry, you won't be in a physical and mental state to hear God. To hear God concerning what he wants you to do. Because you are trusting God for something, but because you are in anxiety and all that, you are not even in a mental state to hear God. You are worried about your business going forward, but you need to be in a state spiritually to even receive that guidance and wisdom from God. But you are anxious, so you are not even hearing God. God is trying to pass the message to you, but you are not even in a place you can hear. All right? So how do we deal with anxiety? Very interesting way. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4. How do we deal with anxiety? Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. What's the first thing there? Do not be what? Anxious about what? anything. That's the first step. The first step is, don't worry about anything. 
Don't be anxious. How do you not be anxious? Take note. So this is the real point number one, basically. Trust God. Trust what? God. Trust is the antidote for anxiety. Every time you are anxious, you have removed your trust from God. Every time you are fearful or worried, you have removed your attention from what? God. Every time. Every time. Worry is meditating on the devil's lies. Every time you are worried, what you has happened is that you have removed your attention from what? God. You are, you are focusing on the wrong thing. Trust God. Be anxious for nothing. How do I achieve that? Number one is by trust. Trust. Trust God. Hallelujah. Trust God. He said, take no thought for what you will eat, for what you will drink. Can you imagine that? He said, take no thought. Matthew 6. He said, take no thought for what you will drink. He said, because your father, your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things. Trust God. Trust God. Trust that God will supply all your need. Somebody here. Come on, tell you about trust God. That's how trust means depend on, focus on, rely on, expect from God and God alone. What brings disappointment to many people? And listen, disappointment can be very bad. What brings disappointment to many people is trusting men. All your disappointment has come because you were expecting something. In fact, that's what disappointment is. You were expecting something from someone, either in terms of gift or finance or behavior, and it didn't come. That's what disappointment is. Your disappointment has never come from God. It has always been from people. Are you here, somebody? That's why the Bible says, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. So, number one, in managing trust, unmet expectations is where your problem starts. So, instead of putting your hope and trust in men, put that hope in God. It's a hope deferred, make it the heart sick. DJ, bring it up. Beautiful. Look at these guys. He said, hope deferred, make it the heart sick. That's disappointment. That's negative emotion. It's coming because you put your hope in something that failed you. Unmet expectations. In this life, listen, let me tell you something, guys. Let me tell you something, guys. In this life, eh, it's you and God that has transaction. He can use or not use any human being. So don't put your face or trust in any human being. It's easier. Unmet expectations. Sometimes some people look like it, but they are not it. Hey. As a pastor, I have to deal with this a lot. Unmet expectations. One day, <laughs> something interesting happened. Um, I have a Mustang, so it's kind of a sports car. It's not really a sports car, but in Nigeria, they call it sports car. But for car enthusiasts, we know it's not a sports car. But that's not... So, I have this sports-looking car, and it's convertible. It's convertible. So, on Sunday, one Sunday after church... I and my wife were driving home. You know, the top was up and all that. And the way the car is, it doesn't have a lot of back mirror, so you won't see inside the car from the back. So as we, one of our routine, most Sundays, some Sundays, is that we like buying bottled granite. They sell it right at the junction before you turn to my, where my street, major road is. They sell the granite there, bottled granite. So we normally buy. So one Sunday, after church, only me and her in the convertible must stand. We passed where we normally buy granite. I would say, ah, we didn't buy granite. So we should buy, Abby. Yes, so we should buy. So we stopped on the road and said we should buy. Immediately I stopped on the road and started reversing. I saw one fine girl standing on the road near the granite cellar. And I just had a feeling in my mind that the way this girl saw me break,
unmet expectation. You know the scenario now. Fine guy standing at bus stop. Fine car stop. And I start reversing. The girl and even some other people standing there were all expecting and assuming that I'm reversing to come and give her a ride. To come and say, baby, what's up? Where can I drop you? Give me your number. So immediately I stopped. Started reversing. I looked at Simon. I saw her. She noticed I stopped. I saw that her posture. <laughs> I said, there's trouble. It's granite I'm looking for. <laughs> hey. You see, because in this life, you can't control what people want. They are free to want what they want. They might not want you. You must be okay to accept that it's not you that they want. They have their own agenda. Until your own agenda and their own agenda meet. You, they, they, they are not interested. So be okay with that. That's how life is. As I was reversing, reversing, I said, hey, this girl will be disappointed. <laughs> I was already pitying. I told my wife I was already pitying her. So when I reversed nearer her, I now wound down. Hey. <laughs> I now look back right where she's standing because she's standing next to the ground. So as I reverse, I didn't hear what she said. <laughs> But I'm telling you, as I reverse wound down, she was already smiling like, yes, I'm here. Because this is a fine car, this is a fine boy. I mean, there's nothing, there's a fine girl, nothing remaining. It's a fine day. Let's make it happen. When I rewind, I said, please let me call Granite. <laughs> <laughs> My brother! <laughs> of course she didn't answer me. <laughs> of course she didn't answer me. She <laughs> after all this is gonna <laughs> She didn't answer me. I had to get some other way to get the granite person's attention. I said, it's not sorry, it wasn't all it's it's unmet expectation. And it was a total misunderstanding. I wasn't in any way trying to get her hope up. I just wanted to buy granite. <laughs> so in this life, <laughs> a lot of disappointment will come like that because you were expecting something from someone. It's you and God that have business. Mm. Hallelujah. You and God that have business. So there's a lot of unmet expectations in life. And you can't determine how people treat you. That's not up to you. Say, I've loved this person so much. I've put in so much. They, they don't owe you to reciprocate it. You can't, you can't determine. That's not, it's not your, under your power to determine how they will treat you. People can treat you with disrespect, even though you treated them with respect. It happens. People can return your good with evil. It happens every day. You were the one expecting good. That's why you are disappointed. Put your eyes on God. Trust. Are you here, somebody? People can do all kinds of things to you. Somebody might promise you something and not deliver it. They are not your source. God is your source. You should only be disappointed if God fails. And God will never fail. Put your eyes on God, not on your uncle that promised you. Not on your uncle that is abroad. He too might be struggling where he is. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Like I said, as, as, as pastors, I had, to, I had to deal with this. Because sometimes we pour our whole heart into ministering to people. I mean, we pour our whole heart into blessing people. I, I, I used to have people that were in this church that I saw them like... And that's the bad thing. You can be seeing somebody as family. They can be seeing you as being disposable. You can't control how they will treat you. That's not your job. You are seeing them as something permanent, a permanent feature in your life. They are seeing you as a disposable feature. Or feature in, your, in their own life. So what are you going to do? It's not your place. You can't determine that. Ah, there are people who have invested my life into. I've done this job for 20-something years. As in, some people, I raised them from zero. Started watering the sea, teaching them, counseling them. Ah, pastoring, it's not just Bible. There are people we taught how to brush teeth, how to bath. I'm telling you. Ah, it's not... Uh, 
just teaching Bible. We invested. There are people that I used to attend their children's inter-house sports because I saw the children like my children. In my mind, we were a family. They were not seeing it like that. So once there's a slight whatever, they can just carry their bag and move to the, cross the street to the next church. And you'll be left hanging. You must realize that. Ah, it, for me, I, I train pastors like to learn that because it's one of the hardest lessons for pastors to learn. Because the pastor is giving you 100%, you are free to respond as you like. You can collect every... For churches and pastors are public property. When it's going fine, it's our own. Once it's not going fine, it's their own. You know that's how we treat public property. Once there's anything that is owned by the government provider, if it's great, it's our own. Once it damages, let somebody who is supposed who is in charge. Somebody should fix it. Somebody. <laughs> once something goes wrong, it's somebody. But once it's good, it's our own. This is our property. The road is our own. But when you see death on the road, do you stop to pick it? It's no more your own when there's something that needs fixing. So there are people you are treating as permanent features in your life. They are seeing you as disposable. And, and Jesus had to go through this. And how did he go through this? He handled it the same way I'm teaching you, by building your security in God. See what happened to Jesus. You know that there was a time in Jesus' ministry that everybody left. How many of you know? Ah, there was a time in the ministry the whole church closed. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Um, let me look for how I read it there to be short. Verse 65. I'm trying to manage the reading so that it won't be long. Sorry, um, let me start from verse 37. Verse 37. I'm trying to manage the time. Oh, yeah. Did you? He said, now see what happened. Bef he said, all that the. Um, Okay, let me read this first. He said, all that the Father giveth me shall what? Come to me. Do you see this? His security was not in the people. He said, the people that God has given me, they will what? Come to me. Do you see there the emphasis on God? He said, the people. See, God has resources. You need to depend on God to give you people. Don't focus on people. Focus on God. God has people that he will connect you to that will be your people. But it becomes bad when you're trying to hold on to the people. Leave the people. Let's read this. It says, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise what cast out. Next verse. It said, For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of my Father. Next verse. And this is the Father's will which sent me another. Okay, let's stop there. So, baseline, he preached that he is the living bread. And anybody that eats this bread shall not die shall not hunger again, and all these things. People say, hey, praise God, because they've heard before that in the last crusade, people that came ate bread and fish. So when they were saying all this bread, they were saying, praise God, hey, amen, pastor, you are the bread. One day, you are the bread. <laughs> they were happy because they have heard that the after the service, they share bread in this church. So when they were saying, I'm the bread of life, they say, amen, you are, Hallelujah. When you eat this bread, you don't hunger. You say, hey, man. They're saying, just bring the bread. We agree. Then he said, the bread I'm talking about is my blood. It's my body and my blood. They say, eh? <laughs> he continued. That anybody that wants to eat this bread needs to eat my flesh and my poor blood. Their face changed. And he continued on those things. When he finished, the Bible said they were angry at the saying. DJ, I don't know if you can find it for me. I was just trying to manage. They were, they were angry at the saying. See, and they all walked away. Let's go to verse 65. Verse 65. See, they were angry and they all walked away. He said, and he said, therefore, he said, that no man can come unto me except it were what? Given to me of my father. Next verse. He said, from that time, many of his disciples did what? Went back and walked no more with him. They, they left. Many of them. Many of them. These were thousands of people. When they started hearing flesh and blood, they said, no, this is not the kind of church we want. They all left. See, see what happened. See what happened. 
Next verse. Then he said to even the twelve that were left, Jesus was so secure in himself. He said to even the twelve that were left, say, will you also not go away? You need to get to that stage where people can't threaten you with their presence or absence. You need to get to that stage where you are so rooted in God because God is really all you have. God is, that boy can say he's not marrying again. That boy can say, I don't want to marry you. Don't let that break you. It breaks your heart so much because you are depending on him. No, God is your source. God is the only reliable person in your life. After the thousands left, the 12 that were core members, he asked them, are you also not going? Hallelujah. He said, are you not going away? And they said, oh, see what they answered? They said, where are we going? Um... You know, you have the. But you see, the point is that if you see at the beginning, he kept saying that the people that God has given me. Do you understand? His focus was not on the people, it was on that God is the one supplying covenant people to him. And if you get what I'm saying. So, as a pastor, I know that, you know, we might be thousands of people here, you know, and all that. One day, if you hear that I did something, I'm not looking at your face, whether you will stay or not. It's God I'm looking at, the people he has given me they will still be here. The people that are here because they like the jokes and enjoy the music and other things, they will go and find other jokes and other music. You must be secure in God. Whether it's relationship, business, customers, so people will leave you. They have their own agenda. They are, maybe they're looking for granite. You thought they're looking for you. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. It, might, they, it doesn't mean they're bad people. They are just people. So number one, trust. He said, take no thought for your life. Don't, don't think about how you take care of yourself. Just trust that God is meeting your needs. Number two, second step. Still in the same Philippians. All the four steps are in the Philippians. Same um, piece of scripture. Let's go back. Philippians 4. Yes. 6. He says, do not be anxious for what? Anything. Next step is, but in everything by prayer and what? Petition. In fact, you can give me the CEV version of this. CE version. It said, don't worry about anything but what? Pray about what? Everything. So that's next uh, step. Pray. Whenever you are dealing with anxiety over an issue, pray. Not prayer of worry. Not prayer of complaining, but a prayer of faith. What we do in prayer is not just to complain and whine to God's hearing. What we do in prayer is to give him the load we were carrying. Transfer it to him. He's able to carry it. Say, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. So I will give you rest. Give me your problem. I give you rest. We exchange. He's called the prince of peace because he has plenty of peace. So when you pray to him, he collects your burdens and gives you a ticket of peace. Are you here, somebody? You know, when you go and drop your luggage in some places, they have to give you a ticket to show they are the one that dropped this luggage. I get what I'm saying? So whenever you pray, what God does is that he gives you a deposit of peace. That's why they said in the next verse after that, that the peace of God will keep your hearts and minds. Whenever you pray, what happens is that you let out. If I did, give me verse 7 in CV version. Beautiful. Look at what it says. CV version. Verse 7. It said, Then, because you belong to Christ, this, all this is the same um, piece of scriptures, God will bless you with what? Peace. Did you see this? Whenever you pray, what, the first thing God gives you is not even the answer. The first thing God gives you is peace. Because you need that one immediately. The answer might not be able to come immediately. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. The answer can, you, God, God is not a magician. It's magicians that tell you abracadabra. The more you look, the less you see. Hey, bleh, 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 hey, bah, you see smoke. <laughs> and God is not a magician. So the answer of the prayer might not come immediately. But however, God will give you a deposit of peace. So that you will hold on to this peace pending when the whole issue is what? Resolved. Because he doesn't want you to be anxious. Prayer. Have you prayed or you have been complaining? Have you prayed or you have been gossiping? Have you prayed or you have been telling people that can't help you? Pray. 
the prayer of faith, not prayer of complaining. You pray like Anna prayed. The Bible says Anna prayed and she went away. Her countenance was no longer sad. That's how to pray. Not that you're praying, you're crying. All this prayer and crying, you can't harass God with crying. You need to know that. It's good to cry if you like to cry, but don't think that it's helping you to make God answer you. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So pray. Pray. Spend time in prayer. You are going through anxiety over an issue. Spend time in prayer about that issue. Spend time in prayer about that issue. Every time you spend solid time in prayer about the issue, God gives you a deposit of peace. Let's read that verse 7. Let's read that verse 7. It says, um, Then be, be, because you belong to Christ, God will bless you with what? Peace that no one completely what? Understand. Because people will, why they don't understand is that your challenge might still be there, but you are now calm. And they are wondering, with all these things going on, why are you calm? They don't understand. It doesn't make sense. You, you didn't have money. You've prayed. You still don't have money after the prayer in the morning. But now you have confidence. You have peace that things are working out. And that is the attitude you need before the breakthrough comes. You don't have a child. You're waiting for a child. But you prayed. The child cannot come in one minute. But peace. You are no longer worried. You're no longer ashamed to go where people that have children are. You're no longer ashamed to talk about how your children will look and what school they will go to when they come. Are you getting what I'm saying? Gives a deposit of peace. Let's finish that scripture. He said that no more understands. And this what? Peace. Take note. See what I'm saying. This peace will do what? Control the way you what? Think and what? Feel. Remember, we're talking about your feelings. He said that peace controls how you feel. You will no longer be sad, demoralized, depressed. When a Christian is depressed, really, it's very, it's very awkward. It's very, I mean, it just means they are not tapping into what's available because there's so much available for us as believers. Okay, so number one, um, number two, sorry, is to pray. I like number three particularly. Number three is to praise. Hallelujah. Oh, this one is heavy. Bring it up. Bring the same scripture up. Verse six now. Go back to verse six. You can give me at, at King James now. You can give me the King James now. Hallelujah. Hmm. Look at verse 3. He said, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with what? Thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Listen, listen. Some of you don't know the power of this thanksgiving. You cannot worry and worship at the same time. That's what they are teaching you there. Try it. You can never worship and worry at the same time. People that do quotes. Oh, these, are, these are powerful quotes you should be getting out. It should, should be on Instagram by tomorrow morning. Hope you are getting Commit to I'm hearing it myself as I'm saying it. <laughs> I don't know if somebody gets what I'm saying. Just try it. Try to be grateful. You'll find that you can't be depressed and sad at the same time. The moment you start being thankful, your attitude lifts. Oh, I don't know if somebody's getting what I'm saying. All your promises are here. And amen. Quick. Depression can't stay here. It can't. So. Too much, too much, oh, excess love, oh. You can't have the two emotions at the same time. Jesus, you love me too much, oh. Too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me too much. Sing, I'm not smart, but I'm telling you. Thank Sing, you for I'm not telling you. Sing, Sing a minute. Sing a minute. I'm not telling you. Sing a minute. Put the lyrics, put the lyrics. Simple. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Oh, 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 oh. 
Lord a big praise as you take your seat. Do you understand? Those two emotions can't stay together. Worry and worship can't stay together. Gratitude and uh, sadness can't be together. You can't be grateful and be sad at the same time. The moment you start being grateful, your spirit will lift. I know someone's getting what I'm saying. Just try it. Thank you for loving me too. You can't now be depressed inside that. Because you have to lift your voice and lift your spirit to sing. I know someone's getting what I'm saying. And that's what I've been trying to teach you. Your emotions are real, but they can change. Once you engage the right thing, whatever you are feeling can change. The depression you are feeling is real. However, you can change it to joy. You can't. That, that's the whole teaching of this month. Is that what you are feeling is real. However, it can change. It's just bad that some of you are submitting to that feeling as if it's the only op option. No. You might feeling sad. Nothing is working for me in this life. Nothing is getting. Just start being grateful. Look for anything to thank God for. He said, thank you for loving me. That one at least you. Everybody has that one. God loves you. For God so loved the world. Even the sinner is entitled to this one. So everybody qualifies. They didn't say, thank you for giving me husband. They didn't say, thank you for giving me money. Thank you for loving me. Everybody qualifies. So you can sing that one. The moment you start being grateful and finding things to thank God for that is working, you find out that your spirit lives. And that's how you attract the one that is not yet working. To start working. He said, bring the prayer with thanksgiving. If you bring the prayers just as a prayer warrior, you will be living there depressed. You will be bombarding heaven as if God is the problem. God, do it. I'm warning you. God, do it. You don't know me, oh. Do it. <laughs> no. When you come with the prayer and also support it with gratitude. Joy. And joy is a bit superior to peace. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy helps you move, helps you take it, helps you make moves. Are you getting what I'm saying? The joy of the Lord is our strength. So be grateful. Be grateful. You can't praise and worry at the same time. You can't worship and worry at the same time. Try it anytime. Just start worshiping. Start thanking God for anything you can find. Yes, some things are not yet working, but there are many things that are working. Thank him for those ones. You will see that your spirit will lift up. The atmosphere will change and the miracles will start. Are you here, somebody? The last one, number four. Your thought life. Take charge of your thought life. Take charge of what? Number one, trust God. Your eyes must be on God and God alone, not on government, not on Naira, not on your employment, not on your job, not on your husband, not on your wife, not on your uncle, not on your friend, not on the guy buying granite. On God! <laughs> Number two, bring it to God in prayer. Not prayer of complaining, but prayer of faith. And that's kind of prayer. Prayer that after you pray, your countenance must change. Don't continue worrying. Number three, back it up with praise. Back it up with what? Praise. You can't worry and worship at the same time. Those two emotions can't stay together. Light and darkness can't stay together. And number four, take charge of what? Your thoughts. Listen, you'll be amazed. Your feelings are not independent. They are real, but they are not what? Independent. All feelings, and I'm not joking, all, 100%. All feelings are controlled by your thoughts. All. I'll say it again. All your feelings are controlled by what? Your thoughts. So if you can control your thoughts, you can control your feelings. That's why Jesus said, when he was talking about worry, he said, take no thought for your life. He said, take no thought. He knows that the reason you're worrying about your life is because of the kind of thoughts you are thinking about your life. All your feelings are traceable to your thoughts. And your thoughts are traceable to what you are exposing your mind to. Still that same scripture. They are all there. All these things are in the same piece of scripture. Philippians uh, um, 6. and 4, sorry. From verse 6 down to yes, 8. So after verse 7... 
DJ, give us verse 7 first. He said, and the peace of God, which passes on understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Then verse 8, see how you keep your mind. They say, finally, on this issue of your feelings, say, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are what? True. Whatsoever things are what? Honest. Whatsoever things are what? Just. Whatsoever things are what? Pure. Whatsoever things are what? Lovely. Whatsoever things are what? Of good report. If there be what? Any virtue. And if there be what? Any praise. Do what? Think on these things. Hallelujah. They are saying, control what you think about. If you control what you think about, it will affect how you feel. The arm robber is thinking about scarcity. So he becomes desperate to get it. If you start thinking about abundance, you will also find ways to get it. Legitimately. Are you here, somebody? All your feelings are tied to your thoughts. That's why you can't let anybody tell you just anything. You don't bring gossip to me. There's so much. Some of you don't have any faith. If you have many faith projects in your life, you can't allow any negative information that will bring negative thoughts, that will bring negative feelings. Mm -mm, don't bring it here. Somebody gets what I'm saying? Don't focus. That's what I'm saying. I don't watch news. I don't watch Nigerian news. I don't watch. Not because you, some of you, it's fine if you can want to watch, but I just know that I don't think there's anything there. And I've never been wrong for a long time. I've never seen any news announced in Nigeria that sounds great. Never seen one. Never seen one. Instead, if you keep watching the news, you, you make up your mind to leave Nigeria. That's all that's going to happen. That's all. I can tell you the end result already. You will feel frustrated. You will feel, you know, defeated and all that. I don't listen to anything they have to say. They have nothing to, to say to me. These guys can't help me. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. What are you exposing yourself to? What are you listening to? He said, see, see, they tell you, they think on these things. Things that are pure, that are lovely, great report. These are things to think on. Don't think on defeated thoughts. People die. Somebody died in an accident. 13 people jump inside Todd Milan by themselves. Six people die on Express Road. They shoot 13 people. So since you are watching, it will affect your feeling. You start feeling fearful. You start feeling afraid. It's, it's simple. Take charge of your thoughts. He said, take every thought captivity. Taking captivity of every thought to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10 5. So take, 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 take them captive. Capture the thoughts because they affect your feelings. It's very simple. Somebody still asked me yesterday where I went to preach. And people ask me these kind of questions all the time. Pastor, I'm dealing with masturbation. If I want, even ask the question that is kissing, now these are single people. He said, Is kissing a sin? Can singles be kissing? I say, you are asking the wrong question. You are asking the wrong question. Because if you think the issue of sexual purity is about how can we beat the system and still enjoy small, then you have missed the whole point. Because you, <laughs> you think it's a, like your principal in school that say, don't go here. And you guys are finding a secret way to go without causing problems. That's not what it's about. God has nothing to gain or lose by you living right. If you want to sleep with a hundred women, God has nothing to lose or gain. The only person that is going to suffer is you and your destiny. I don't know if I get what I'm saying. Single girl, he say he love me. He say he love me and you have to move all your top. And here your cloth. God has nothing to gain or lose by that. It's you that will gain or lose when your heart is broken. The principles are not for God. They are for you. So if you are looking for how to beat the system, you have missed the whole point. It's like somebody that I give you medicine. He looking for how to beat the system, not take the mess. Who is going to die of sickness? Is it the doctor? It has nothing to do with the doctor. My elder brother was like that. Every time they give him mess, he throw it under the fridge. One day we were cleaning the fridge. We saw a whole pharmacy. <laughs> under the fridge. Whole pharmacy there. <laughs> God has not... So, so sexual purity is not even physical first. It starts with the purity of your mind. You can't be walking around the whole world thinking about singing sexual thoughts. They want to keep your body pure. It doesn't work like that. Your, your most important sexual organ is your mind. You have to st so purity has starts from there. It's not, it's not for show. It's not for physical. It starts first inside you. Somebody get what I'm saying? So you're always feeling sexual. You're always feeling sexy. I want to have sex. It's very simple. Check what you're always thinking. 
You're feeling to operate on their own. They are not independent. You are thinking sexual thoughts. That's why you are in a sexual mood. I'll say that again. You are thinking sexual thoughts. That's why you are what? In a sexual mood. Your mood, your feelings don't operate on their own. And you are most likely thinking sexual thoughts because you are exposing yourself to sexual material. Either on media or whatever. Simple. Try it. If you are fasting, or let me say, if you don't have to fasting, if you start thinking about food, what's the next thing that's going to happen to you? You'll be hungry. Your feelings don't operate on their own. They operate by thoughts. They're largely operate by thoughts. So if the thoughts, negative, keep coming, you will get negative feelings. If positive thoughts keep coming, you get positive feelings. So what you need to do is to keep, they say, they've told you what you think about, think about the word of God. It will give you positive feelings. And that way you will not just have positive thoughts, you have positive feelings and you also have positive actions. And then you'll get a positive outcome. Hallelujah. I decree for you that the year will end in your favor. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Can we just take one minute to give thanks? Lord, we thank you for this year. Thank you for every good thing you have done. Thank you. We would act on everything you said. We would trust you. We will pray about it. We will praise. And we will take, we'll take charge of our thoughts. Take charge of our thoughts. Baroso toko bararabaseke. Labrade ke zoto kradasta. Shata borata sete borodo soto. We will cast all our cares upon you because you care for us. Yes, we have to spend more time reading the Bible. We'll spend more time meditating on scriptures. Scriptures that talks about your faithfulness. Scriptures that talk about your goodness. We will not look at the government. We will not look at all these things. We don't care. We will focus on you. You will give us comfort. You will give us strength. We will look at you. Your promises to us. Your promises to us is what we will look at. It brings comfort. It brings strength. Masataya. Librodoso kodaya. Shatabala city. In the name of Jesus.